Hi and welcome to this video and as you can see a little bit more of the dissection of this Peugeot EP6 or THP150 has happened again this week. So if we look from this camera above we can see we've removed all the heat shields, the oxygen sensors and of course the catalytic converter like so. So that's what this video is about, removing your catalytic converter off this Peugeot engine and hopefully it will help you if you ever you need to refit your cat or something at least you can see what's going on so hopefully this video will help you and if it does would appreciate a thumbs up and that and if you can like and subscribe much appreciated and as always have a good weekend okay so we we'll start by removing the turbocharger outlet expansion chamber union so that's on top of the the engine and that goes from the turbo to the intercooler so that's held on with two screws which are removed with a 10 millimeter socket and also an eight millimeter socket for the sort of jubilee clip on the other side so we just get our eight millimeter on that yeah so that feeds down to the turbo intercooler that's at the front by the radiator so some sort of expansion chamber that is okay so we'll get that out of the way so that's what that looks like and then we'll move on to removing the first oxygen or lambda probe at the top so for that we need a specialist uh, socket which is a 22 millimeter one with a split down side to allow for the cable so you can use that split just to get the socket over like so these can be quite tight but thankfully that one's okay so I just turn them back and forth normally just to if there's any rust in the thread or anything just to try and break it up a bit so it doesn't bind as I start to remove it. Now, rather than keep twisting because you're twisting the cable, it's probably best to unclip the electrical connection first, like so, to save damaging the actual sensor by twisting. Now, so we just pop that out. So the, these two oxygen sensors have different connections on. So this is like a square connector at the top here and the other one's more of a rectangular one. Okay, so we can just unwind that now. Careful not to bang it or drop it because I think they are quite sensitive and they're normally quite expensive. They're a little bit sooty there on the top. So that's the one before the cat. Okay, so let's remove the cylinder head cover heat shield. And this has flexible ends. So it's 10 millimeter socket again for these two screws. I wonder what material they use for the ends on that. That would have been asbestos back in the day, wouldn't it? I presume that is not asbestos. Okay, so get those two out. And then we can just lift this out of the way. And that piece of flexible heat shield there. That's what that looks like. Okay, so then the next thing is to remove the catalytic converter upper heat shield. Now, note mine has a couple of screws missing, so somebody's been in here before. So it's a 10 millimeter socket for the top three. And uh, that's what they look like. So we get these three out. And then there's two screws, I think, that hold this onto the main body of the heat shield for the cat. And that's what appears to be missing on mine. So I think this engine's had quite a few problems in the past, which is why it's been tinkered with before. So here we go. You can see there's two missing there. But to get to one of them, you do need to remove this bracket, the, conne the connector bracket, 
that would be a 10 millimeter again and that gives you access to the missing screw there we are missing and missing so that was an easy job they would have been 10 millimeters as well so we can just lift this upper cover off and out of the way like so so you've got a better view of the turbo now okay so now I've removed the catalytic converter the main body heat shield again I've got a couple of screws missing here one there and one on the other side is missing so I think there's normally four that hold this on it's a 10 millimeter socket again so it's only two in my case like I say this this engine's not going to be going back together I'm just going to strip it down show how the timing works how do you, how you do the timing on the engine um, because I think pistons and valves have hit each other on this engine so it'd be quite interesting to actually remove the cylinder head and see what damage is inside but anyway so that's the main body of the heat shield okay so we can now move on to perhaps spraying a little bit of WD-40 or plus gas before we actually remove the catalytic converter because especially that bottom one there oxygen sensor that could be quite rusted in okay so let's remove that second oxygen sensor now so this one actually was a bit harder but we've removed the connections first so like I say this one's slightly different this is more of a rectangular shape so you can't get them mixed up because they are both different there we go so that's what that one looks like okay so going back to my normal 22 millimeter split socket and this is the smaller breaker bar and as you can see it's not actually going to do it so I, I did mention there I did mention there that when you do retighten these it's 45 newton meters so they're actually not in that tight in theory so we'll try a bigger breaker bar now on a different socket there we go that's just cracked open so I'm still quite lucky there that could have actually still been completely seized in and almost unremovable but there we go as you say slightly different one that one um, I'm sort of tapping it there very gently but you shouldn't knock them okay so let's remove the catalytic converter now so we've got five nuts that need a 13 millimeter socket these two are a bit rusty so I'm just tapping that on there okay so let's get these two bottom ones on when you come to refit this you actually need to tighten the first three at the top by the turbo pre-tighten those then you put these two nuts on and then you go back to the three at the top and fully tighten them obviously if you tighten the ones at the bottom it would make the joint at the top probably leak so you've got to make sure these three are firmly fixed before over tightening the two at the bottom okay so we get these three out now one of them's in a bit of an awkward position it's right underneath here okay get that one out of the way so you might need a bit of a slimmer socket to reach inside here to get this third one out thankfully again it wasn't seized but perhaps somebody's already had this catalytic converter off before when they were doing some work on the engine slight tap there that's a very gentle tap because again you shouldn't bang the catalytic converter in case you crack it and there it is there we are so there's three names on that Peugeot Citroen and BMW so obviously this engine is used in those three vehicles I think this might also be used in the mini okay so now we've removed the back heat shield 
So what you do need to do is remove this support bracket for the turbo. But let's take these two bottom brackets off first, which is a 13 millimeter socket. That one's come out with the stud. So it's normally like a nut there that comes off, but it's come out with the stud. And you can put the studs back in anyway, but just get this other side out. So this one's come off as it should have done, which is just the nut. So if you need to put the Torx um, back in the thread, it's a Torx E7. And then 13mm socket for the turbo steady bar. So we just loosen that with a 10mm spanner, like so, and then we can just lift that up out of the way and re-tighten it. Like so. And then it's back to 10mm socket again for these two top screws that are holding the heat shield on. And lastly this one. And then we can pull the rear heat shield away, like so. There we are. Okay then. So, here's a quick overview of the parts removed. Okay, so here's some talk and other information which you can pause to view for longer. And as always, here's some reference photographs, again, which you can pause to view for longer. So you've been watching how to remove the catalytic converter on a Peugeot EP6 
or THP 150. And thank you for watching and supporting my channel. Please like and subscribe. And this video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in November 2023. I can also be found on Instagram, Facebook, and X as Coats and Gators.